I spent considerable time showing you how to approach this material and how to practice it. So let's move a little quicker now. Now, early in the previous lesson, I talked about how we were going to reference a couple of other modes, minor modes that are options, by looking at the Dorian mode and performing some alterations. Indeed, that's the case. If you look at diagrams 37 and 41, you will see that we have the Aeolian mode superimposed over your E minor chord form. Same chord form, so I don't need to go through that. So what's the difference between Dorian and Aeolian? If you don't know, you definitely need to know because all this information should be memorized. And for you guys that have an aversion to theory or you say, I wasn't good in math and blah, 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 you know, just table it. Just You're going to be a musician. you got to study. I mean, this is the information you need to know, and it really will open up a lot of doors. Just if you're overwhelmed, just take a little bit at a time and learn it thoroughly. And, you know, you got all the rest of the time on the planet, however long that is, so just do it. So look at diagram 37. The difference between Dorian and Aeolian mode is that the Aeolian mode has a flat 6 instead of a natural 6. Well, I want to go back and talk about seeing the octaves of the scale degrees, because that just speeds up this process tremendously. We're going to reference diagram 36 for just a moment. That was your Dorian mode. Now, we know that the only change that's going to take place is that the sixth is going to become a flat six, because we want Aeolian for our present tonality. Look at diagram 36 and find the sixes. How many of them are there? There are two of them, and they're an octave apart, right? So what's going to happen when we go to diagram 37? The only change is that those are going to turn into F naturals, flat sixes. Now, practice this just so your technique's where it should be. Hold the F sharp from your first and fourth fingers. Have your third finger already on the F, and practice going back and forth. Hybrid picking. Because you don't want to have to move your hand, you want to be efficient because ultimately we're going to mix these things up. You might decide to go F, F sharp in your line, so you don't. The less you start moving your hand around, the more legato you be, the more efficient. I don't need to sell you on this. So quickly, let's go through our jam track, and we're going to use the jam track that has the power chord again. We'll start first with that, and then I'll play along with the jam track that's just drums and bass, but we're doing the Aeolian mode. Now, your practice is the same as before, and this is going to be easy. Because if you practice what you were supposed to in a previous lesson, all we're going to do is change one note. You'll say, I already see all this information. Piece of cake. So let's go ahead and play along with the jam track and recite the scale degrees as we do so. So we've got flat seven, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. So you can hear the darker sound. One, two, flat three, four. Fours are the same as before, five, flat six, flat seven, one, two. I'm playing real basic, no vibrato, you know, very little, not bending string. Okay, now what has happened here is that the half steps have moved. We still have our half step between two and flat three. But when we play Dorian, the half step occurred between the six and the flat seven, right? But if we flat the six, now we got a whole step between those two. And if you look over on the second string in diagram 37, you will see that now the half step occurs between the five and the flat six. So when you practice Aeolian mode, you need to know how is it different from the Dorian mode? All I got to do is flat the six, and that means that now my half step is between the five and the flat six, not between the six and the flat seven. What does it equate to sound-wise? Well, the Dorian mode is a brighter minor tonality, and you've got your A minor 6 harmonies and all those things that we lightly touched on in a previous lesson. But you don't have that here. You... You've got that flat 6, which is a whole different... It's darker, more classical sounding, right? Okay, so this is the Aeolian mode where we're playing sort of left and on top of the chord form. You see how I'm terming this? Let's go to diagram 41. The same thing occurs that we had before in diagram 40 when we did Dorian mode. There's your chord form. You can see that in diagram 41. So the scale proceeds up. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, right? Flat seven, one. Again, the two's available in two places, right? Flat three, four, five, flat six, 
flat seven, one, two, flat three. And that's your laid right over your old friend, the minor pentatonic scale. So we'll jam against this track loop. Okay, let's talk about chords. Will we be able to play all of the same chords that are built from the Dorian mode in the Aeolian mode? Now, if you answered no, you were correct. It's pretty logical because obviously things are going to change. We've changed one note. But what does that really mean to us? When I see a chord symbol or I think about the harmony to a tune, um, I think about what notes are in the chord if the chord is presented to me first, and then I fill in the blanks with whatever scale tones it would work. So what that means is that if I'm playing over an A minor chord, only three of the notes have been established to me. The root, the flat third, and the fifth, right? So the two is a variable, the four is a variable, the six is a variable, the seven is a variable. So they could be sharp, flat, a lot of different options in there, right? So if we're playing over an A minor chord, you see how we can clearly use Dorian or Aeolian. They're both gonna work. Now it depends, now I can't, this is a little beyond the scope of this lesson, but if you're in a progression, the chord could be functioning as a two chord, clearly as a two chord, so you're obligated to play Dorian mode. If you played Aeolian, you'd be venturing out of the key and that wouldn't sound right. Your ears would probably tell you this, but before you hit wrong notes, just do a little analysis and you'll be okay. If the chord was functioning as a six chord, you'd play Aeolian, you'd be obligated to play that, not Dorian. But sometimes you have ambiguous progression, so you really need to keep your ears open. But a lot of times in a progression, if I'm just playing over a jam track, we're not going anywhere. It's just a static chord. It's A minor, right? You have the option to use a mixed mode approach, Dorian or Aeolian in your lines. And we're going to get into this. I talked about this back in our caged modes over the major tonalities how you could mix Ionian and Lydian, for example. So think of this as a parallel to that, only in a minor situation. But what would negate that option? Well, clearly, if you had a pianist or another guitar player comping for you, or playing a little figure or something that went like this. What's the line doing? Okay, the line's playing a flat seven, a one, a flat three, and then what's it hitting in there? A six. So you'd have to be careful because if you hit that, there could be a little bit of a clash going on if at that moment when the guitar player or the keyboard player is playing that six, you hit a flat six. So just be aware of your options. Now during the other part of the lick, if the lick was just this, I can go either way because I'm not going to be fighting anything. The line that I've been given underneath as a rhythm part isn't establishing whether it's a natural six or a flat six. So those are the things that you want to keep in mind. Now, if this is bogging you down, it shouldn't because it really isn't that complicated. We're just looking at what's going on around you when you're soloing or playing your parts. Or if you're just coming up with a rhythm guitar part. What if the keyboard player is doing this? Well, do you see these, he's throwing in this D chord. Well, that brings out that six. So you better not go. He's going to look at you and say, do you hear what's going on? You're not in the right key. So be aware that because of that fight that could occur between the flat six and the six, you need to know what's going on around you. But everything else is up for grabs. So I talked about building chords out of this. If you don't understand your harmony, we'll just go through it. Let's start with just the A minor chord. That's root, flatted, third, and fifth. We could add the nine to that. So if you know where these nines are, if you know where these nines are, if you know where these nines are. Now, why am I saying that over and over again? If you have to stop and think, it's too late. You gotta know this stuff as well as you know from a C chord or anything, an E power chord, where you don't even think about it. So everything that you see on these diagrams, you need to make sure you think of it this way. If I'm in this area, I know I have three roots. I have 
three twos or not. I have two flatted thirds. I have three fours. I have two fives. I have two sixes. I have two flat sixes, or depending upon which way I'm fingering it, right? And I have, there are four flat sevens in this whole area if we combine the two areas based over the E minor form. So do you see how I've got it down to where I, I see the notes on the neck, but I took a little time to just say, well, how many of them are there? And then see them in octaves, and it just speeds up this process, and it makes it easy to go ahead and jump and play different octaves and things like that. So make sure that you know how many of these scale degrees are in that area and what changes and all this business. Plotting it out, I always say that, but for me, I think it's probably one of the best ways to see the fingerboard. So back to chords. I've got an A minor add nine. I can add that nine different places, right? I can add the sixth in there in a lot of different places. How many? Well, to be specific, my six, I said I had two. Well, there's a third one here. See? Because we got that redundancy. So I can play an A minor chord. I can put the six over there. I can put the six over there. I can put the six right there. And they're all different voicings that serve the sonority however I want. I can mix those together. I can have a six nine chord. So I've got the one, the flat three, and the six and the two. I don't have the five in there. I don't have to have it. If I want it, I can put it there or I can leave it out. You can always leave a five out. Okay, so we talked about the flat seven. There's my A minor, A minor seven. I've got a flat seven in there. I could just as well do it right there. So do you see, I can build chords all day because I see these scale degrees. Again, it goes back to knowing the information so well that if you just pull some numbers out of the hat and say, all right, I want to play a one, a two, a flat three, and a four. Let's just do that for fun. A one, a two, a flat three, and a four. Okay, here's our one, here's our two, a flat three, and a four. And they all came right out of diagram 37, right? Or diagram 36. And it helps you because you're not just locked into a bunch of chord fingerings or grips, as the term applies. To me, that's a pretty limited way to view rhythm guitar. Don't even think rhythm guitar. Think comping like a pianist, okay? So we have covered the Aeolian mode and discussed how they've the two modes vary, the Dorian and the Aeolian. I've talked about how to see these scale degrees in all the different places, the redundancy of it. Also ways to practice, how to build chords. Don't forget the same idea of pedal tone. Now there I just took that high C, the flat three, right out of. Diagram 41, and I just came down. And I just get some music that way. And it's just great tools for creating some improvisations. That's the Aeolian mode over the E minor form.